The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this 14th, uh, Wednesday, the 14th, uh, Wednesday, the 12th of April. You don't want to get ahead of the game here because the day is young. We're up 160 in the Dow at 33,845. This is going to be so fascinating. Let me, let me go through this slowly. When I was uh, uh, speaking about this for the last couple of days, what I was saying is, that the tech, where is before? Well, let me just do this so that I can get everybody on the same page. <clears throat> let me find my newsletter right there. Let me scroll up. Let me get this right here. In the Chapman Wave methodology, what we try to do is identify the lowest low bar, and then when it starts moving up, and you can only make a trough when you've moved from a low bar with a higher low on the next bar, because that makes that little V-shaped pattern to the upside. That's called a trough. That's when you can start your wave count. You can't start it on the bar that makes a low and then spikes up and makes it a high. Um, you can only do that in the Chapman Wave uh, instant restart at PT. All right, here we go. We identify the lowest low bar, and from that, I still haven't changed this. It's got the Chapman Wave notation twice. It's uh, for a reason. I had it on a slide, and I had it on a different um, chart. And then I put the two together, not realizing that I had the heading. So it's there twice. I'm not going to change it because in the sequence of the uh, the saved charts that I have, I've got it perfect. Why would I want to spoil it now just over a silly thing like that? Anyway, it makes it more, it uh, gives more emphasis to it. So I'm just going to sum this up that from the low bar, we count each successively higher peak. If at any point before it gets to a D, it, it fails and takes out the starting point of the low. That's, you have to start all over again for the wave count. But I, I anticipate that there should be a peak A and a B. At that point, there could be an upgrade. So you've gone from a buy signal, which is the start of the move, to a buy mode. And that implies at least four higher peaks going to peak A. Then the next letter is B. The next letter is C. One penny higher takes you to D. It can even go to E, F, and G. But at D, other things can happen. That's all you need. Yeah, that's all you need to know. So let's go on here, and you start off at 31,429, uh, and we've been buying, and we, we still holding the long from October, both in the Dow and the uh, three times long. And I had said that if, uh, so let me just show you that this made a peak A and a peak B. We keep adding, adding, and we've added again. We took the little bits off yesterday. Uh, and the day before, and because it just uh, it's nice to build up profits as you move along. Um, I don't have to add or quadruple my entry point for subscribers to take on huge risk for massive profits. I would prefer just to be a little bit cautious. So here we are. We had a high today of 33,883. Let me change that. 33,883. In fact, I can take that away completely because at this point, it's still active. So I look for the peak D. We waited and waited. As we were going towards C, I said, no, it's been two weeks now. I've been saying we should get to a D. You've got your leg D. There is no peak D yet. If tomorrow, whatever the high is today is a lower high, that makes peak D. But now this is going to be the issue. Uh, for, let's forget the weekly chart on the, in the middle and the monthly chart on the right. We have got the, let's go from the top. You've got the price well above. This is a midpoint ch channel line that I spoke about ages ago. I said, I'll keep it there because sometimes I used to do this when I hand charted an engineering paper, pencil, and, and I had a 15-inch ruler. I had these long charts. I used to tape them together. Um, I've got one right there sitting there. Um, but and let me just like, keep it there for old time's sake. This goes back 20, more than 20 years. Um, and uh, so what we're looking at is, that midpoint, when I said that if we take that out back in February, be careful because we can go all the way to the to the 200-period moving average or lower, below 32,948. And the pattern that we were looking at was this inverted V or this arch pattern that looks like the dreaded H, and we ran all the way down to 31,429. Now what's happened is 
The, the price is above this midpoint channel line. Let's call it at 33,600. We're at 33,863. The nine, if the price is way above the nine period moving average. The nine is way above the 14. To get that green, to get that pink closing below, would mean that you'd have to actually trade underneath 32,800, I'm suspecting. It could be even lower. So that says, it's extremely positive right now. That's why I say to subscribers, only if certain conditions are met, will we, um, will we consider shorting. And none of those conditions were met this morning. The day is young. It could still happen. I'm, I'm keeping it in place all day. But I love what's going on. The MACD is still, look, the histogram is still rising. The stochastic is flat at 94.5%. Any book that you read about technical analysis invariably says over 80% is overbought and under 20% is, is oversold. When you say overbought, doesn't that really imply to you that at some point you should turn around and get just bought instead of overbought? No, that's the wrong thinking. Over 80% is good. Over 90% is excellent. Over 95% is just perfect, although you've got to expect that at some point you're going to start to go down. But until that happens, holding in the mid-90s, and flat, not turning around within five sessions to go negative again. I love that action. So we still remain along all our positions. And within that context, what we're looking at is this left side high. Now I can draw this in. I was going to do it before, but it's getting to be so messy, this chart. I don't like messy charts. I know you say, well, that's messy. But uh, for me, um, there are a lot of things going on. So what I'm going to do is be a little bit conservative. I'm going all the way to that particular level there, the the arch of the trap, uh, the arch of the um, the arch is what we look at in terms of trying. If you can't go to the exact plumb line low, which would be right here, and if I went to the exact plumb line low, that would that would take us to about where we are today. And I want to give it some room. So I'm moving a little bit to the right to the actually I could even go to that peak A right there. Okay, let's just go there. So if it's not exactly the midpoint, then you have to use discretion, but it's not just discretion. It is really a methodology that we have, and that methodology basically says uh, these are the strictures, these are the rules, and best to follow them. So it says on a very accelerated move, we could get by the 17th, the 17th, of, oh, before I forget, uh, next week uh, we've got um, Teddy Kexa giving one of his webinars. should be a fabulous webinar. I recommend it. Uh, we're looking at, um, we are now in the month of April. So that'll be the 9th. 17th is Monday. Oh, that's fine. I'll do that. That's a little bit more aggressive than I would like. But I'm being, uh, I'll just put this in. So from that level, now we can go to there. Um, does it look correct? No, it doesn't. So I'm going to say, let's go to the trough on the left, right there. Okay, this is it. So here we are. This is the trend line that we're looking at. And it says, if we hold all the way through the close today, preferably the Dow's up 192, even a plus 80 would be fine. I, but I don't want to see it turn negative at any point because that'll be a, a ready... That'll be poor action and reaction. And we've got another economic report tomorrow. So within that context, this is what I'm looking at. That the high that was made at, well, I've got to type in the other chart, at 30, 34,331. <laughs> That's a big ass. It's another 700, six, yeah, 500 points. Whoa, that's a lot of points. I'll be if you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open. 
to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, I'm just going to interrupt this message to do a particular chart. This is FCX, Report McMoran, Inc. Copper. Did you say FCX or FDX? Uh, uh, Basel of FCX, please. I have a $41 call for next Friday and it's trading at 41.32. Okay. So, as I'm looking at it right now, Zip, I think that this is Freeport McMurrin Inc. It's a copper, I, other metals, but it's a cop, basically a copper company. I've got a target on the left of the 7th of March, which had a higher 42.31. Uh, is that 31? Yeah, 31. And that should come in by uh, the, by Monday. But here's the thing, Monday, say, oh, that's Marathon Day. Yep, Boston Marathon Day. I got a funny story to tell you about that sometime. If I remember, it doesn't matter. I'll do it right now. The FCX chart says, yeah, you see this gap up yesterday and today we made a slightly higher high. That's a positive, except look what you've got. You've got peak B and then a slight the higher peak C. Then you pull back. The nine period moving average is strong. It's over the 14 period moving. The MACD is good. Stochastic is flat at 81%. It goes for five sessions. Oh, sorry, it goes for four sessions, holding the 14 period moving average. And then yesterday gaps up. Let me just have a quick check here on the high grade copper. Yeah, high grade copper is up today. It's up 0.03 at 4.04. .04. Not a great looking chart. In fact, what I am going to do is you see this weekly chart. It makes no sense to keep this trend line down like that because it's already accomplished all those levels. Now you've got a new one. And it says that in the weekly chart, high grade copper needs to start trading in the 4.15 area on a weekly basis, close above that, and it breaks out of that trend line. And that'll be almost the same thing for the, the, the daily. I needed to do that, obviously, because you're talking about a copper stock. So let's go back. So as I'm looking at it now, I think there's more of a sideways move, FCX. And you have a, a did you say this coming Friday? Yes. Well, I always have trouble in America for I don't know how many decades and decades and decades. Some people say next Friday. I remember back in South Africa when we said next, it means we skip this Friday and we go to the next Friday, not this coming Friday. So this Friday would be the uh, 7th March. This Friday would be the 14th. If you're talking about three days' time, I'm going to ask you to do this. 
you must have a little bit of a gain. It depends when you got it. At the high today, when it hit 41.54, that was your best premium. This is what I'm going to recommend. Because you're already into uh, Wednesday, you've got the whole of today. I happen to like what the market did. It, it resolved a whole bunch of things. But then you've got tomorrow as well with another economic report. But as it stands right now, I think we've made the low of the day. And now there's going to be, I need to do this because if you're looking at FCX and you've got such a short period of time, you see this is the pattern that I call the Eiffel Tower. When you get a single leg A up from a news report at 8.30 or, or when the Fed makes its statement at 2, two o'clock on a Wednesday. Yes, it says PC because that was the low that it started at. But Basically, you saw a huge spike from the 200 period moving average in the 10 minute chart and the E mini. And then it just went steadily, lower highs and lower lows, lower highs until it made this basic support at 41.40, 41.70.5 uh, in the E mini. Just above the 200 period moving average. But you see that the 9 period moving average never went negative. That's a big positive. It means that there's still room on the upside. So I think a chunk of the work on the downside has been done. Even if we go sideways, I'm not sure that this is the day that everything tanks. So with that said, let's go back to our story. And let's look at FCX. And FCX, Freeport McMoran, McMoran trading at um, 41.33, up 19 cents. I need to go to the 120-minute chart. There it is. So let's see, we take that low, pick A, B, C, D, E, F, brand new, A, B, C, D, E, F, and now you've got a new breakout, A, B, I suspect that that's C. I like what I'm seeing. It's nicely above the 200 period moving average. All I can say to you is this. At this particular point, you either break even or you've got a little bit of profit. If you have, I don't know if you have one, or if you have 10, um, but you have, I have a 41 call. So if you have a call, just one call, I suspect that you were prepared for a little bit more of a risk. If you had a number of them, you'd be able to scale in or scale out. Yes, you'd have a bigger risk because you've got a number, but you're in the position to be able to make changes. Yeah, you have one position with one decision. I'm holding or I'm taking off. So what I would say to you, watch the price of FCX closely. If it starts to pull back, if anything happens in the, in, during the day, and if the Dow, which is up, uh, I'd use the Dow as a benchmark as well as the S&P. The Dow is up 158, the S&P is up 17. If at 12.30, that's in two hours' time, to 1.15, the Dow is now only up 87 points. The S&P is only up 7.95, something like that, or 8.23. I'm going to say to you, 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 your risk is increasing because not only are you not market sensitive anymore, you are commodity sensitive. And therefore, anything that happens tomorrow could really make a big difference because the premium will shrink tremendously. If you go under today's low of 40.89 and you trade there for 35 minutes in the 40.70 area, that premium will shrink dramatically. So I'm going to say if you watch this closely, um, if you're playing the lottery, then there's nothing that I can say. Then you're just going to hold it and just see what happens Thursday and Friday. And sometime on Friday, you will get out. But as I'm looking at it right now, I'm prepared to say to you, if it starts, if your premium starts to shrink today, your risk for Thursday and Friday, even though by Friday you could be looking at Freeport McMahon trading at 45, uh, you've got risk right now because we just don't know. So I'm just going to say to you, if it starts to drop below 40 points, I'm going to make it 40.75. So now you're in a little bit of a losing position. I'm going to say to you, just watch it really closely. And your risk tolerance, if you're prepared to accept, and usually this is what I like to do for an option, I'm prepared to go, I'm prepared to risk a 50% 50 50 loss. If I'm really convinced that there's a, a really good chance that it's going to move high, but I'm totally wrong if I lose that 50% that 50 But I don't want to get a less than that, because that's just a waste, just throwing money out the window. 
So I don't know what your tolerance is, but I am going to say to you, I'm going to, uh, as it stands right now, I treat it really, really closely. I, I, I mean, I watch it really closely because if it does close below yesterday's low, uh, then it starts to want to fill that gap, and that's where you got to be careful. So that's my recommendation. Now, if you're asking me on Friday, uh, could it hit uh, 40? 42, 41.81 to 42.35 or even higher, or the trend line itself. I'm just going to say to you, if you survive the day, it's a 41.16 right now. If it can, if you can go through the whole day and it hasn't gone to, what did I say, 41.75, then you do the same thing you want. Just got one, if that's my time for that. And with one, you're in the end of your house. We're back in a moment. Dow's up 128. We'll be back some. It's going to be a top session. I'll be back. We'll look at Bud. Yes. Okay. Uh, elect. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we're back. We're looking at Einhauser I, uh, I Bush, Anheuser Bush, uh, InBev, SANV, a foreign company, beers. I think it's beers and liquors. I'm not sure. I know it's beers. Uh, trading at 63.75 down a dollar 36. What I am looking at here is uh, we've got a peak D back in uh, 2021, around about June, July, and then it pulls back sharply in the arch formation, holds very nicely. And now the monthly chart, a uh, nine period moving average from last month, the positive month, has turned up. The MACD is good, stochastic's okay at 76%. The weekly chart, all of the technicals are good, except for one little thing. Um, it's made a peak E with a silent doji from last week, 
and a sharp move down with it. So far, it's like, it looks like an inverted Chapman wave Roman candle and a peak C1, C2 double top in the daily. So I'm not sure what the, uh, what is, uh, was it just to do an analysis? Uh, can you look at Bud? I allude to two. Yes, I, I, I'm looking at it and I think it's pulling back. I also, from the pattern that I'm looking at, even though the nine period moving average is still way above the 14, it's coming down sharply. It'll take a lot. It'll take a move below 62.30 for that nine period, or actually even lower than that, to turn negative. But at this particular point, I'm just calling it a big digestive phase. My suggestion is that, I, well, it, it was uh, to look at it. I'm looking at it and I'm saying, at this point, it's been a very strong stock. It's now taking a breather. And that breather is suggesting that the, if it takes out 62, it's at 63.69. If it takes out 62.35, uh, below the midpoint of the 62 level, um, I'm going to say to you, then, it, then it's a longer, a longer digestive phase and the weekly 14 period moving average of 61.61 is likely to be tested. And then there could be a bounce. You could even turn into a head and shoulders over a period of uh, six to eight weeks. But I'm watching it right now, and I'm saying it's on. It's it's turned and making lower lows and lower highs. I want to see if there's a round number at the high. 66.39 uh, of that day. No, 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 no. Okay, there would have been a clue as to where your resistance is. So at this particular point, I, the whole area of 6460 to 65.80, I'd say, is resistance. So it's just taking a digestive phase. It's had a spectacular move. It deserves a rest and it's having a rest. I hope that helps you. Uh, next question. Uh, Basil, I am from here and I struggle with the whole next Friday thing. It drives me nuts. Oh, 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 yes. Um, yeah, and the whole thing, with, uh, it, it's so simple. When you say this Friday, it means this coming Friday. When you say the next one, it means after this Friday. That's the way I always look at it and say it gets a little confusing. Better to give a date uh, or just to say this coming Friday. Um, a couple of things. So Rochelle in the den said GFAI. Wowza. Okay, Rochelle, let's have a look. We have a good friend called Rochelle, but he calls himself Rocky. GFAI. Whoa, ho, 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 up 10% at 2641. So that is really a very big move. I um, So I, a couple of people asked me, would you go through that stock you were talking about with Tom yesterday? Um, I'd like to do that, but let me just finish this. So this is peak A, peak B, peak C. Peak, a leg D. We're in leg D, way above the 200 period exponential moving average. I don't know what they do. Uh, God force AI. Oh, this is in the AI area. All right. Well, so uh, so the question came in. All I can say is that uh, it's a 26.14. There's a lot of activity even now. As I'm talking to you, uh, it was up 10%. Now it's up 9.75%. Now it's at 9.6%. point. Yep, there it is. It's, so it's changing really quickly. And the monthly chart is only in the leg A. But it has this way of screaming to the upside and then just giving it all back and making lower lows. I suspect now it's starting to make higher lows. And the whole area between uh, 20 and 18 will be your first big support. If it takes that out, uh, 1350 to 1230 will be the next support level. But something's going on here. So there's, there's a stock that uh, we were involved in, we are involved in. Uh, SYM, it had uh, from our entry point, it had about a 30 something percent gain over just a very short, just two weeks or so. Um, we've been long from the 21th. We've taken little bits off yesterday. I, it hit around number 29. Now, this is interesting. So, it, this is the chart. I want to, oh, I don't have it anymore. I do have it somewhere, but I'm not going to get it. So, here's the chart. There's this thing that goes to 28.48 back in June or so of last year, and then that same bar closes at about 14, and then it goes even lower to the tens. And then it tries to rally to halfway through into that candle, and bam, it comes back down again. And then it goes down to 8.75 on the 18th of 
uh, November. It's a name that came to me as a streamer when it was under 10. So I kind of put it on my list and then I sort of forgot about it. But then I saw to see that it was uh, doing well and I checked this. Oh, what is this? I thought, okay, what is the stock? So it's Symbotic Inc. It's end-to-end -end AI, the artificial, artificial intelligence, robotic warehouses, automation systems. So this guy's family had um, uh, grocery stores forever and ever. And I guess he just got tired of all the, the, the schlepping, all these things and putting them away. And he decided to make a robotic uh, out, of, out of it and he automated everything. And now I, I'm not sure about the story. I'm just guessing that at this particular point, um, uh, it's become very uh, a very popular uh, set of instruments, the, this robotic uh, concept. So I looked at it and I thought, oh, I like this very much. So I, I missed it over there in the 18s. I had already drawn in the one-to-one -one Chapman wave. With a, this is I love this particular pattern. You go up sharply, then you come down, and you make like a rectangle formation, but it's like an H pattern that fails. And then the technicals start to move up sharply because it can give you a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside, which it did. And then it pulled back, and then it started walking the nine-period moving average, and I love that. So on the next pullback after peak D, see, we're going long. So we got long at about 20, in the 21 area, 21.49. And then it just started screaming every day. Now, I suspect, and I could be wrong about this, that SYM, Symbotic Inc., is in the sweet spot of memes. I, I, I just, this is my thinking. I could be totally wrong. And I'm only saying that because it's in the right area. It's, doing, it's been doing the right things. Now it's very overbought. It hit a round number 2900 zero, zero yesterday. I thought, oh, my. I was going to send a note out quickly saying, okay, take another little bit, but we, we wanted a split long. We never got the second split. So I don't want to diminish the amount that we have. I'm prepared to wait for a pullback to get, get to add back what we've taken off, two little bits we've taken off for really good gains, and then wait to see if I add a second position. It could even be higher. But the reason why I liked it in the weekly chart was look at this cup formation. I used this as a plumb line. I said, if that's the plumb line that starts to move higher, where could it go to? So the left side at 28.48, I forgot to put the date in. So I'll do that. The date in was the 20, the week of the 24th of June. So let me just put that in here. Uh, six, oh, yeah, that's good. So you'll print it down. 6, 22. So that high, I said, if we go, let's use this as a plumb line because it's so far away. Let's just use that. So I used that as a plumb line. And then I drew in this Chapman Wave Inside Wedge Target Resistance Line. That's it. Chapman Wave Inside Wedge Resistance Target Resistance Line. And that's my right side. I'll be back in a moment. Does it? You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Yeah, I, I, I've written down loss. I wrote a whole chunk of things that I wanted to go through today. So I'm, I'm going to try to do that. But first of all, remember the single leg A up? Looks like a, a, it can turn into what I call the Eiffel Tower failure pattern. Or it looks like an uppercase A. You go up the, up the side, you go diagonally up, and you come down with the same kind of pattern. This one's a little more complicated. But now we've taken out the 200-period moving average and quickly bounce back up again. And that's what I, that's what I was saying uh, to, uh, to uh, about the uh, FCX, that there could be intraday things, um, and the longer you go sideways, the longer you're usurping upside energy, but you're also usurping downside energy. So it means that you, you, the spike is both up and down, becomes less and less. This is the cup formation that we're looking at in the uh, one minute chart. Now, what I like to do is to go to the peak D. You see if I can use that or the, uh, uh, the tiniest candle after the D or at the D uh, and use that as a fulcrum, the plumb line in the middle. If I did that, that would have taken me about two bars late towards the arch formation, taking out the low. Uh, this to me looks like we, we are seeing selling come in. And that selling come, came in. Uh, all, six minutes after that, moved to the upside, and it went all the way to a high of 41.77.75 in in matter of six minutes. And from the 200 period moving average of 41, I think it was 38, and now we are back at the same level, come all the way back. I don't like that. So what I've said to subscribers, I didn't give a time limit. I said for today, and that's how I do my newsletter. I either give you exact times. I say before such and such a time or under such and such a level. Today I said, if the SPY gets to a certain level, we want to take a short position, and that would almost automatically, I, I believe, we don't know, will take us out of our long position, a, a trade in the very shorter term, add on positions to the UDAO that we have three times long Dow. So that's, it makes it as simple as possible. I used to wait until the report, and then I thought, okay, for a long time now, I think my subscribers have noticed, I don't, I don't do anything. I wait until I'm ready in the morning, which is usually between 8 o'clock and 8.15 uh, before I send out my newsletter. I don't wait for the 8.30 report anymore. I just wait until I'm ready to do my work, and then I send it out. And I found that so much better. The reason why I haven't had intraday updates um, is because I always find, almost always, not every time, but almost always find that the next day I could have got an even better deal. So I don't do that anymore. I do, it's once once a day, and sometimes I'll say, okay, this is an update. Maybe if I make a mistake, and I have to correct a mistake in my report, I'll, I'll quickly send it out. Okay, so ABBV, ABBV, ABV, uh, I wanted to show this. Uh, it's in a leg F. I love when these, especially a high-priced stock, $162, is making every single day, it makes higher highs and higher lows, higher highs and higher, and then it just barely makes a peak, but it isn't a peak F. Why the heck did I want to show this? Um, oh, because this could be an instant restart right here. If within three bars after D, you make a new high, 
uh, that becomes d slash e. At this point, I'm just keeping this as an f today. It could even go to a g, and then I'll make my decisions. Uh, we don't have this. I'm just saying, is this going to be um, a short position? But what's going on in some of these pharmaceuticals? AbbVie, one of the big pharmaceuticals. Uh, Eli Lilly, didn't I do that yesterday? Yes, Eli Lilly, I did yesterday. It's holding really well. I think it's going to go to a leg D just as a couple of points to do that. And then the C1, C2 that was made uh, back in the weekly chart up in the three uh, in the 370s, that becomes a target. And look how nicely it is in the monthly chart. Uh, I want you to do that. Builder, why on earth would Builder, B-L-D-R, be making an all-time high as we speak with a gap up in leg D at 93.83 up 1.46. So this is the, I, if I say this is one of the weirdest markets I've seen in not years, but in decades, the bifurcation, even within sectors, this is Builders First Source Inc. And I forgot to type in what they do. Uh, I think, oh man, uh, Builders First Source, let me just do this real quickly. Uh, I'm gonna type it in here. Uh, B U I L D E R S first first source does nation's largest supplier of structural building products, value added components, and services to the professional market for single family, multi family construction and repair and remodeling. Our focus is on providing unparalleled service, both large and small. Unbelievable, all time high with. All the negativity out there about the about the housing, etc. What? Look at this dollar HGX. This is the Philadelphia housing sector peak A, peak B, peak C. It's just made a leg D. Uh, still way under the most recent time, the 480s. But look at this. It goes to 538.36 in May of 2021. Double tops just underneath that level. Remember, I talk about these double tops almost to the penny. It's amazing how it happens. And then it pulls back to the 330s or so, pops up. It's at 447 right now, holding very nicely. I, what, what is going on here? All right. So next question, I, I circled what I wanted. Oh, question about the VIX index. Uh, I'm going to do a little more on the VIX index tomorrow. I want to see how it relates to the market today so that I can explain it in cogent terms relative to exactly what we're looking at. But right now it's down 14 ticks at 18.96. Uh, realize, Basil, I realize VIX isn't part of the chat wave core given its independent nature, but I found at Truff DEF the market is typically quite overbought. So that's on the on the VIX index. Yes, uh, would like your assessment on show today. Thanks, Kevin. So, so Kevin, your cow is holding this uh, trend line, a rising trend line, except that now it's made slightly lower lows, and it is trough, trough A, trough B, trough C, trough D. This is a, a, a leg E to the downside. I, I agree with you that it looks almost ready to bounce. But you've noticed that it really has to get into the 22 to a higher area to affect, affect the market's negativity. And so far, it hasn't done that. Let's do a little bit more tomorrow. In fact, over the, t tonight, I'll try to do some to show you some other uh, uh, things that I've been looking at in the volatility index. But I think that the volatility index has been completely distorted, has to do maybe with options, uh, options plays. But it has a completely different function only when it's holding like here, uh, going to 30.81 on the um, 13th of March. And that was the low in the market. That was a peak C. So I, I'll get to it. But yes, it, it's sort of separated itself from what we would be looking at for years. And it used to be down in the eights and nines. Um, so I've had to moderate that because now the 18 is low. Um, but that's because of COVID. So it, it's had a, a, an inflection point, and I, I need to deal with it in a different way. Just as I talk about my Chapman Wave trend gauge, and I don't give out the number because that number could change. And it's the only thing that I don't talk about publicly is the actual numbers of the high or the low. I just had a high reading today which says that the S&P futures within two days should see a really nice bounce, even if it's from a lower, a lower level. So don't ignore the fact that there's still internal strength. The high today on the VIX index, on, on the Trin index, is 2.26. And I'm expecting on Friday that it would be a factor as well. I can have a very low feed. But in the meantime, back to the ranch in this next segment, the final segment of the 
Okay. Great programming here, folks, and check out more before my daily newsletter. We've got some pretty nice positions. I'll be back in a moment and we'll wrap it up. And I want to wrap it up giving you specific things that I'd be looking for for the rest of the week. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, so let's just sum it up. I've got this where I show my subscribers every day. I, I've got this. Let me see if I can get there real quickly. Uh, there it is. Uh, well, let's go to today's. Is that today? Oops, I don't want that. I want this. Yeah. So uh, was that yesterday? Yeah. So this is for today. So this is all the things that I tell tell people about the, the market, what I'm expecting, the Dow. This is the daily chart. Uh, this is with uh, moving averages. This is with the moving averages plus the Chapman wave notation plus the MACD stochastic and on balance volume. And this is peak F slash C in the 120 minute chart. And I discuss all of this right here. I sum it up and I say the uh, S&P and the Qs have already made their their peak Ds. The S P actually snuck to a quick, very modest E today. Uh, I'm looking at this and I'm saying I'm getting quite cautious in terms of the next couple of days. Um, and as a result, I've prepared us to be able to, uh, even as we speak, it might be happening. No, it isn't. Uh, to go to the short side, but even just this is more a trading thing. So that's what I do. So what I'm going to do is to show you that within the context of this pattern that I'm looking at right here, <clears throat> we've already gone to a leg D to 33,894. That means we, will fa we failed under 34,000. Usually the 30, 
the 900 starts the resistance levels. In this case, we just missed the 900 and went to the 894 level. I'm watching this. I suspect that we're about to make some kind of a topping action and have a digestive phase. That's what I'm looking at. And look at the 10 wave automated resistance levels there. Now we're just about to test the 32,600 one. And the other is, look at the, we finally made that leg D. Look, F slash C, D. Boom. Now we've got a D in the 120 minute chart and 10 mils a week. So I'm anticipating if the Dow at any point after 2 o'clock this afternoon is down about 80 points or more, then we've made some kind of a shorter term top and we've got to monitor it very closely. That's kind of what I'm looking at if the market survives and it's up 80 points after 210, I'd say that's pretty good. But I am expecting some kind of digestive phase. Uh, and at 